My name is Brendan Scott and I'm the historian in residence for Cavan County Council during this decade of centenaries. Uh, program. And as part of this uh, program, I'm recording a number of these short webisodes in which I will be discussing the various events, people, and themes which arise in Cavan during the early 1920s. And the subject of today's webisode is the Battle of Lap and Duff, which took place on the 8th of May 1921, and the death there of Sean McCartney, one of the IRA volunteers. And the Battle of Lap and Duff really was a, a, a disastrous episode, really, in the history of the War of Independence at Cavan. Uh, and as I said, it resulted in the death of this IRA volunteer, uh, Sean McCartney. In late April 1921, an IRA organiser in Cavan called Seamus McGoran, who was from uh, Belfast, set up a new active service unit um, in the East Cavan IRA Brigade, which consisted mainly of men from the Belfast Brigade. This new active service unit, also known as an ASU, would be bringing much needed weaponry with them and would be reinforced by locals if and when needed. This new ASU left Belfast for Cavan in early May, but the Coot Hill Battalion was not informed of this until relatively late in the proceedings. Uh, so there were little preparations made for the arrival of this new ASU, which was led by their commanding officer, a guy called Joe McGee. Uh, they arrived uh, in Cavan by train uh, into Red Hills and they marched the remainder uh, of the journey to Lap and Duff, which is about two miles from Tully Vin. The weapons uh, that they brought with them were smuggled by Cumann the Mon members uh, in travelling rugs in the train from, uh, from Belfast to Red Hills. And it took three journeys uh, to transport the entire contingent of weaponry to Cavan. Uh, and the last person to arrive in Cavan from Belfast was this guy called Sean or John McCartney. And he got there on the 6th of May. So who was Sean McCartney? Well, this is a picture of him here. Uh, McCartney was a lieutenant in the D Company of the 1st Battalion of the Belfast Brigade. And according to the new book by Eunan O'Halpin and Dahi O'Coran, The Dead of the Irish Revolution, Sean was 21 years old at the time of his death in May 1921. But Sean was actually born on the 9th of December 1897 to his parents, Michael and uh, Margaret Bloomer. Uh, this actually makes him 23 at the time of his death, not 21. Uh, Sean was a Roman Catholic, uh, and he's noted uh, his name is noted as John, not Sean, in both the baptismal register and in the civil register uh, of his of his birth. Uh, he was baptized by Father C. F. Henry on the 11th of December, two days after he was born, uh, with one Martha Bloomer standing as his godmother. So somebody on his mother's side, whose maiden name was Bloomer, uh, stood for him. No godfather is recorded. Uh, his father, Michael, was a labourer and they lived at 43 Norfolk Street, Falls Road, Belfast. Uh, Sean became a, a mechanic himself and at the time of his death was actually in receipt of a 16 shillings uh, per week pension due to a hand injury he sustained while serving in the British Army in World War I in France. Uh, and it speaks, I suppose, to the shades of grey that we have at this time, that a man who could risk his life fighting uh, in the for the British Army uh, and be in receipt of a pension from them could then a few short years later be fighting to overthrow that same British government in Ireland. So it's one of the curiosities of this period, I suppose. But either way, following McCartney's arrival in Cavan on Friday the 6th of May, this Belfast ASU, this active service unit, were brought to a farmhouse in Lap and Duff owned by a guy called John Brady, who is known locally as John the Rock. Uh, and this house, as I say, was on Lappendorf Hill or Mountain. Uh, and it was chosen for its remote location uh, because it was felt that it was a secure and safe base uh, to have these men. Uh, Brady's daughter, Claire, uh, was an active member of Coming to Mon, and she was later actually imprisoned in Clemain and Jail where she went on hunger strike. Uh, Brady's house was about a mile from the main, from the nearest main road, and the only entry up to the house was what was uh, described as being a lengthy boreen. 
The house itself was described by the Anglo Celt in 1921 as a substantial two story slated residence, some time ago tenanted by a labourer, but unoccupied since Mr. Brady discontinued active farming work. So it was, it was a, an empty building. So it was perfect uh, for use by this new ASU out of the way and shouldn't be any, anyone looking around or snooping around to see uh, who are these new people in the area because they wouldn't know they were there. That was the, that was the theory anyway, that was the idea behind it. Uh, but the following day, the 7th of May, which was a Saturday, uh, Joe McGee allowed three of his men to visit a local pub Despite uh, despite being warned not to do so uh, because uh, of the alarms that would be that would be raised by three northern strangers arriving out of nowhere, as it were, during during a period of such high tension as there was uh, at this time, uh, the men returned back to the farmhouse uh, after about four hours. But that visit to the pub had severe repercussions for everybody involved. Sentries had been posted around the area around the house. Uh, but there was no backup plans in place should anything go awry or anything unusual uh, happen. There was no backup plans there. And early on the morning of Sunday, the 8th of May, one of these sentries reported acti activity at the bottom of Lappendorf Hill. Uh, these were incorrectly identified as locals who were bringing supplies uh, to the men at the farmhouse, but it was actually a contingent of British soldiers making their way to the farmhouse where the ASU were staying. The appearance of the men in the pub the previous evening had alerted locals that something was going on, and it was also felt by some that a local Protestant farmer had, had informed the Crown forces of the IRA position at Lapp and Duff, although it was believed by others that if he had done this, it was done inadvertently. Word may also have reached the British through some local families who had RIC members in them. But either way, fighting broke out as daylight began to break. And while fighting was ongoing, Joe McGee, the CEO, sent two of the men, a guy called John, uh, John McDermott and Sean McCartney, uh, he sent them out along the hill for some reconnaissance uh, work. And what happened next is unclear due to the confusion and chaos of the battle. And it was felt by those involved to have been particularly chaotic. Um, and there are contradictory reports as to what happened. One witness later recalled how he saw McCartney running with McDermott across the slope under fire when McCartney was struck and fell. And from here on, shooting became heavier uh, while McGee left, leaving the unit with no instruction. The volunteers were poorly armed, uh, uncoordinated and outnumbered. Uh, the witness report of one of the Belfast men, a guy called Colonel Tom Fox, was very critical of the local volunteer companies, whom he said, and this is a quote, completely neglected their duty of protection and no warning was given of the British movements until they were observed by the sentry. Local volunteers later on countered that argument and they argued that they had had little time to prepare for the ASU's arrival. Either way, after an engagement which lasted about two hours, the volunteers, who were by now down to the final two or three rounds, surrendered shortly after 7 a.m. The Anglo-Celt, in its report on the battle on the 14th of May, had special praise for a local girl named Mary Eliza Brady from Drunco, uh, an adjoining town land. Mary was woken by the gunfire and she had gone amazingly to the scene of the battle, uh, which was ending when she got there. And she spoke to a British Army officer and inquired whether a priest was required. And seeing McCartney's remains lying in situ where he had fallen, she, opened, she went over to the body and she opened his collar and shirt and seeing that he wore scapulars, said a prayer for the repose of his soul. Now, the British Army also had their own version of events. And uh, there was, uh, this report was made by a Captain C.H. Dowden of the King's Royal Rifle Corps. And he noted at how around half five uh, in the morning on the 8th of May, he led 36 men on a search of houses at Lapp and Duff, looking for an IRA organiser who was supposedly staying in the area. Dividing this group into four to make the search easier, Dowden's group came upon the volunteers at Lapp and Duff. He, he was sort of implying quite accidentally that they didn't know that they were there. McCartney was killed, uh, as uh, he, he noted that, uh, that a man died, and two others were wounded. They also took eight others prisoner 
and seized a significant amount of ammunition uh, and explosives. Now, some IRA weapons, uh, the IRA managed to dispose of them safely uh, at a local area called Porter's Rock. And they were later recovered by volunteers in the Kill Company, Sean Lee and Thomas Lee. Uh, the prisoners were transported to Belfast under what the Anglo said noted was a strong guard. Uh, and they were, they were uh, uh, brought out of Cavan on uh, the early train on the Monday, on the 9th of May. And six of the prisoners were tried in Belfast and uh, were sentenced to death. But the other two men, one of whom was Paddy Smith, who later became a long-serving Fianna Fáil TD uh, in Cavan, uh, he, he escaped the sentence along with another guy by claiming that they were innocent bystanders who had just kind of walked into this uh, uh, battle that, that was taking place. Uh, and it, there was also an attempt made then on the 3rd of June uh, to rescue the condemned men, uh, but that ended in failure. But in any case, when the truce was signed on the 11th of July, uh, the, the, the men's lives were saved then. McCartney's father, Michael, along with his brother, uh, came to Cavan to take custody of his son's remains on Tuesday the 10th of May, bringing with them a coffin. The grey, and, as, and I mentioned this grey area that McCartney occupied, as I say, as a former British soldier who is now f a, a member of the IRA. Uh, and, and there's this sort of strange area that he occupies. And uh, he, he was, he, the, according again to the Anglo Celt, uh, the British military saluted McCartney's remains on a number of occasions and accorded his father and his brother uh, with, with great respect and received them with, with, with great respect and courtesy in what was described as a sympathetic manner. Uh, so as I say, that these were unusual times that a man, as I say, who had fought in the First World War for the British Army and had been wounded for his efforts and in receipt of a pension and so on, could then be killed by members of that same army uh, in, in the War of Independence. But as I say, these were uh, unusual times. The Battle of Lap and Duff was a highly unsatisfactory one from the viewpoint of the IRA and in many ways neutered the threat of the IRA in Cavan, certainly in the east of the county, as so much of its armoury was seized that day. If you think of the, the, the three trips it took to get all these weapons down from Belfast and they were got, you know, like that, and, and most of them were, were seized uh, by, the, by the British Army. Um, Richard Mulcahy, who is the chief of staff of the IRA, noted that the entire event demonstrated what he called a very appalling want of elementary training. And one of the IRA officers later remarked that the battle left, and this is a quote, little credit on the officers concerned, including myself. We should not have given battle to the enemy at all, but collected all our arms and equipment and cleared off. He also criticised the actions of McGee, Joe McGee and Seamus McGoran, uh, believing that the ASU could have been gotten away relatively safely as the mountain wasn't surrounded and there was plenty of cover. McGee, unsurprisingly perhaps, didn't see things that way and instead complained, and again this is a quote, that local volunteers are very slow and do not seem to grasp anything at all. They're just typical of this sleepy place and seem to hold enemy forces in great dread. And so he was laying the defeat squarely uh, uh, at the feet of, of, of the local volunteers. The Coot Hill Battalion, again, have another point of view from this, and, and they did not see the engagement in such a negative light. And instead, they tried to put as positive a spin on it as possible. And their OC reported, uh, and again, this is a quote, uh, he reported that the enemy lost heavily. Their casualties at, are 10 at the least. Now, that's a serious exaggeration. Only one British soldier was seriously injured. And in November 1921, again, the anglo Celt reported on a compensation claim which that soldier brought, arising from a bullet wound to the lung, which he sustained at Lap and Duff, for which he was ordered, uh, for which he was awarded £1,500. Now, a memorial cross marking where McCartney died in the field at Lap and Duff was erected by members of the Knockbride Company in May 1922, a year after his death. But that memorial began to deteriorate and a committee established in 1960 uh, decided then to uh, relocate it to Tullico Cross, about two miles away from Lap and Duff, where it still stands to this day. And this is uh, the memorial there. And you can see it there. It's on the side of the road. Um, 
this is is the script uh, that it, that that it says uh, on 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 the uh, memorial, and it says, "Sacred to the memory of Volunteer Sean McCartney, D Company Belfast, member of a flying column killed in action on Lappenduff Mountain, 8th of May, 1921. On whose soul, sweet Jesus, have mercy. His noble life he freely gave for freedom's cause." His patriot soul could not submit to England's laws. And then on the other side of the memorial, then you have the same thing then in, in, in Irish. McCartney's father, Michael, uh, uh, received a £75 dependence uh, gratuity and his mother, Margaret, later uh, received an allowance as well. There's also a, a song written, uh, the ballad of Sean McCartney uh, about him, which I'm not going to sing to you now, uh, but which apparently was a great favourite of Brendan Behan's. Uh, nor is McCartney forgotten in Belfast, where his remains are interred in Milltown Cemetery. And in 2020, uh, an appeal was made by his family, some of whom are still in Belfast, some of them are in Canada. Uh, but the Belfast family made an appeal uh, to locate two posthumously awarded medals, which were collected by somebody in Cavan when his own family were not in a position to do so. But the medals never made it up to Belfast to the McCartney family. A, a mural memorial to Sean in Belfast was unveiled in May this year as well uh, to mark the centenary of his death. And uh, that's the memorial there, uh, 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 which was put up, as I say, uh, on the 8th of May uh, this year, 2021. Um, and so, as I say, it's, it's, it, 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 it was a, a badly organised affair. It, ended badly for the IRA in, in Cavan and was a, a big victory for the British Army in Cavan at that time and as I say resulted in the death of, of another young man um, and so it, it, it was a bad outcome really uh, for the IRA in Cavan and, and as I say it kind of neutered uh, the threat, uh, the, the IRA threat especially so in East Cavan for the remainder of, of the War of Independence. Um, which you know was was over in a few more months anyway. Uh, the War of Independence finished. Um, so if if anybody is is interested in any more uh, reading up on this uh, subject, there are a number of things uh, that that have been published already that people can look at. Uh, there's a Sean McCartney memorial, an essay about the memorial, which uh, seems to have been written by Sean Lee, uh, which was published in the Heart of Breffany in 1978. There's also Johann Faller, uh, Johann Farley's great book. Uh, which was published a few years ago by Calvin County Council, uh, Royalists, Rebels and Revolutionists, which gives really good context and background uh, to what was going on in the Calvin at the time. The Anglo-Celt is all, always a treasure trove of information uh, uh, for, for this period of time as well. And you get loads of really interesting nuggets of information in the Celt. Uh, Jonathan Smith um, uh, of, of the library, who obviously writes a wonderful weekly column in the Celt, uh, he wrote an article, uh, one of these weekly columns, on uh, uh, the Lappenduff battle, uh, and he wrote that in the Celt. It was published on the 5th of July, 2018. Uh, Ewan O'Halpin and Dahi O'Curran's book, The Dead of the Irish Revolution, even though there are some errors in it, um, has lots of great information in there as well uh, about the uh, uh, about the battle uh, and as well uh, of the genealogical information uh, that, that I got about McCartney I was able to find on the genealogy website Roots Ireland uh, so uh, to finish off once again uh, my thanks uh, to Cavan County Council and the library service in particular especially uh, the county librarian Emma Clancy and uh, Jonathan Smith uh, whose article as I say in the anglo Celt was, was a really useful a uh, uh, place for me uh, to, to find out uh, uh, some material. And my thanks as well to Dermot Walsh, uh, formerly of Cavan County Council, uh, for his wonderful photographs of the memorial uh, out of Tully Co, uh, which he was very kind enough to go out and take and send to me. Uh, and thank you all as well for tuning in. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, hopefully again, I'll see you all again soon. Mm -hmm.